Hi. Happy Sunday, everybody. Hello. I hope I'm in live. I hope you can see me. I hope I'm out here talking to myself. Just going to wait for some people to come in. Um, Corbin, when you get here, just request and I'll let you in. This is Black Love and Plants. It's Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Um, we're going to talk about all things Black Love and Plants. Hello, hello. Um, tonight we are going to be talking to the houseplant Poppy Corbin. Just going to wait for a few more people to come in. I'm going to wait for um, Corbin to request. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday. Everybody had a great weekend. Let me move this back because y'all can see my, my shorts. Hi, how are you? Um, I don't have my glasses on today again or my contacts, so I can't really see. I'm going to be struggling to see comments once again. Struggle is real. I hope you guys can hear me. Hi, Corbin. There you go. All right, let me get my camera situated. All right, hello. What's up? How All are right. you? I'm doing I well, and yourself? I'm doing good. I see you rocking your Ava Avery sweatshirt. Yeah. Had to had to come strong <laughs> with the brand, of course. I know that's good. right. Thank <laughs> you. For those of you that don't know, Corbin is one of my brand ambassadors. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> woo -woo. I see. Um, what is up? What is your tree's name in the back? <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald. I see her <laughs> popping over there. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing well today. It's been a particularly uh, solid weekend. So, um, yeah. How about yourself? Okay. <laughs> what did you do this weekend? We had like a mini homecoming. Um, we being uh, the Spellhouse family. Uh, here in Atlanta, um, I'm a 2010 graduate of Morehouse College, and nice. uh, we had the privilege and honor of celebrating one of our own. Um, shout out to uh, Carrie Ann Thomas for opening a franchisee branch of Brooklyn Tea here in Atlanta. Um, cool. And uh, yeah, so that oh, was I dope. saw that in your stories. <laughs> I um, thought you were in this area. Actually, I didn't put. I didn't know Brooklyn Tea was a a franchise. I thought you were like in Brooklyn. So I was <laughs> like, oh, I'm up here, but you're not. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I mean, on the street that they opened up the one here in Atlanta, in it definitely feels like you kind of step into New York for a quick second, and yeah. um, has uh, uh, definitely that sort of vibe. So they did a great job in selecting the location, and again, it was. Great, uh, just being able to celebrate one of our own, and they actually opened it up right next to a plant shop too. So oh, you know, I had nice. to dive over into there, and uh, I uh, I socialize better with plants than than people more often than not. So I found uh, my happiest place there. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, Corbin. You and I are right there, eye to eye. <laughs> when you message me talking about we should only have a thirty minute live. Yes, I'm all with it. <laughs> <laughs> I am not somebody to just sit around and talk all day. I'm really not. But I do it because it's fun for a few minutes. <laughs> and how has your weekend been? Um, my weekend was okay. I had, I didn't want to talk about it. I had a, um, yesterday was my aunt's birthday that passed away. So we had like a memorial kind of thing. So I'm trying to, cruise through this week um you know trying to make it through but i'm here i made it to my live 
I got through the weekend, and we are here talking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, absolutely sending um, positive thoughts and energy your way and healing energy to you and your family. Um, you. And uh, for what it's worth, something that's been sticking with me really heavy as of late, I actually even commented on it, and it's relevant to plants as well. Um, attending a good friend's um, mother's homegoing, I heard someone express, people die twice, uh, or maybe it was somewhere else. Maybe, I, I don't know where I should give this credit, but uh, people have two deaths. And it's the first time in the physical form that we're all familiar with, but not till we stop saying their name do they actually go away, you know? Yeah. Um, which, and which we hope never happens. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I've been getting more in touch with just ways to um, honor people. Uh, and one of the more beautiful ways I've heard is uh, people taking cuttings of a plant um, of someone who had passed on in their family. And they all yeah. have a cutting of that plant now. Um, so that was something that I thought was really powerful and beautiful. And I'm like, okay, all right, which plant <laughs> is going to be which the plant one is that I when you have, a whole, when you have a whole house full of plants? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like <laughs> signing yeah. them up. All right, you're going to get this one. You're going to get that one. <laughs> you got to make a whole it, will for your plants. <laughs> yeah, but it is <laughs> like, it, it did give me a really positive spin on everything and, and like plants live on and on and on and so i think there's such a beauty in like that sense of passing on and and care of things so yeah right like you never you'll never be gone if you leave your plants your plants will always be part of you i love that that's beautiful <laughs> very beautiful all right so we don't want to make this go too long so let's get it started <laughs> <laughs> um and welcome up. to black I'm gonna huh? repot. A, I'm gonna repot a plant while we chat. Is that cool? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I okay, wish you would have cool. told me I would have done the same. What plant are you gonna repot? I have a hoya here that okay. I've been stalling to replant forever and a day. What is that? A crimson queen? No. What kind of hoya is that? Ah, oh, oh man, the name jumps out of my head. But like the sister to the crimson queen. Okay. <laughs> I love Hoyas. I have two um, Hoyas that I got from Lowe's over here, and um, one started to grow, and then the other one I, like, put under my grow light so that it could kind of flourish, but the the leaves seem to be drying out, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I may need to repot it, though. Yeah, I'm letting mine go through its winter woes, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's in a bit of a hibernation stage, to be honest with you, at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what mine might be doing, too. So I'm just trying to give it, you know, give it a little time. We're all going through our stuff right now in the winter time. So give it to March, April and see what happens. Exactly. Exactly. Actually, uh -huh. um, Planty Painter just joined. She's like the Hoya queen. So she might be able to help us, actually. Hey, all right now. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's get let's get started. So your name is Corbin, right? Your houseplant poppy. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself while you're here repotting this plant? Yeah, so um yeah, handle houseplant poppy. Um I underscore houseplant poppy. Uh don't want y'all to get sent the wrong way. Um, yeah, because there's a uh, lot of there's a lot of plant poppy kinda <laughs> vibes going on on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's a few um, folks of handles of that sort. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm a black man in my early 30s. Um, I absolutely <laughs> love houseplants. It's been a very therapeutic journey. Um, I've been wrapped up into it for about three years now, um, two and a half, three years now. Okay. And key things to know about me. Uh, I love basketball. Um, I'm very passionate about world progression on a whole and very passionate about understanding the truth of matters. And uh, yeah, 
I think all those will be things that are very apparent as we dialogue a bit more, but I'll kind of sum it up there. Okay, thank you. Um, you kind of answered one of my, my next question of how long have you been a plant parent? You said two and a half years. So it started before the pandemic? I had a snake plant. Um, so <laughs> I'm a Cali boy. Um, Long Beach is uh, what I consider home. Um, okay. I had a snake plant. I didn't know exactly the best, you know, uh, way to care for it, but I knew that it didn't die on me. <laughs> it was getting no type of light. I don't know how it survived. <laughs> I put it outside like maybe once a week, um, yeah. but that thing rocked with me and gave my very dull space a little bit of light. Um, and then when I transitioned from Long Beach, I moved to Austin, Texas. And I got a couple more plants, but really it was when the, uh, right before the pandemic hit, I lost my job. And okay. sitting at home, the dynamic of looking for a new job, then the pandemic hitting, being in interviews, and it's like, oh, now we have to withdraw. I was, I was at home for a cool minute. I was really in my head as far as like, not necessarily seeing a light at the end of the tunnel um, career-wise in that chapter for me. And yeah. while sitting at home, I was seeing my plants grow on a daily basis. And that was like the, the only magic that I had on a daily uh, basis. And it was just cool to see in real time the growth. And I grew addicted to that. I grew to want to wake up each day to see more growth. Um, yeah. So I can get obsessive. And I was like, all right, how can I help their growth? Um, repositioning them in my apartment, the couple that I had at the time, uh, sitting them outside overnight so they could uh, really just bathe in the humidity. Uh, of, oh, they love the humidity in Austin. Um, and yeah, that, that got me hooked. Um, I also, I, I was able to sink a job, or sink, I, I was able to nail down a job. Um, uh, within a, a couple of months or so thereafter, uh, losing my prior one. Um, I'm a career coach, by the way. So it's like, <laughs> of anyone to lose their job, I felt the most confident to navigate those waters yeah. in that time. So and are you a career coach? Sorry, are you a career coach on your own? Or are you work for a company now? Great question. A bit of both. I currently work for a company um, doing uh, per tongue-tied predominantly coaching designers like ux ui designers um software engineers okay. and i work for myself as well i have my own brand called the candid professional uh where i coach uh professionals across the board um predominantly those who are passion driven uh, purpose driven professionals i love working with folks who have an emotional stake in the game of where they want their career to go and have a mission of like, I want to have some value impact that's connected to potentially my why. Um, or maybe a really strong interest. We don't all have a purpose. Uh, we don't all resonate even with having or wanting a purpose, uh, but a really strong interest in a way that you see being able to better someone else a community or the world in, in one type of way i love working with those type of professionals okay so anybody listening who's looking for a career coach corbin's your guy hit him up you have another um another instagram page or another page that has to do with a candid professional right separate from this i do i do um you're more than Game welcome to Go ahead. hit me up on that page <laughs> which is the candid professional yeah. Or uh, directly on this page, doesn't matter at all. Uh, it'll get to the same person and we can have the same conversation. Uh, but yeah, I specialize in helping professionals heighten their brand, bring, bringing, helping them bring their best self to their LinkedIn, to their portfolios in ways that really optimize and maximize getting the jobs that they want. Um, so uh yeah holla at me all right holla at him <laughs> all right so now <laughs> we've learned a little bit more about corbin you what are you doing with your plan right now let's go back to that <laughs> so 
at the moment, I just took it out uh, the pot that I originally got it in, long overdue repot. And uh, we can see some of the binding even in the roots. I'm going uh, to give it some gentle squeezing, loosen it up a bit. It's dry at the moment, which is the best time to repot. Uh, so that way the, the crumble and the loosening up is a bit easier. Um, not as, uh, you don't have to pull as much, doesn't get as like muddy mm -hmm. on your hands. Um, and uh, I want to get the roots to hang just a little bit. So that way when I put it in the pot, um, the roots will be able to nestle nicely into the new soil and uh, stop up those new nutrients. And uh, shameless plug, this was painted by my fabulous, amazing partner, dope artist on the low. She don't know it, but I'm going to be selling all her stuff, like, yes, <laughs> on, the, on, the, <laughs> on the green market, not on the black market, on the green market. Do, does this person have a page or a website or something, or no? Do they want to be plugged? Oh, is she here? <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to call you out. I didn't know if we were, <laughs> if y'all are all out love. here. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, I don't know your handle by heart. It's uh, Kimmy P right here. Let me see if I can pin you. Yeah, so if you want custom made, custom painted pots, you can uh, slide up in her DMs only for the pots. Yeah, only, <laughs> only for the pots. <laughs> don't, don't get Corbin fighting over there. <laughs> don't. <laughs> All right, oh, so, now, so now that you mentioned your partner, um, let's talk about Black Loving Plants. So um, <laughs> how have plants changed or affected your real life relationships and it doesn't have to be with your partner it could be with family members friends whatever how have your relationship with plants changed those real life relationships yeah so um it starts with how it changed the relationship i had with myself um as i mentioned the time i really got obsessive was during a time period when i had uh, lost my job and mentally i was uh definitely going through bouts of depression, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and the repetition of having to get up, or I mean, I was making the choice, but feeling like I had to get up and give something, some sunshine, some water, a little TLC, uh, that like made me get those things as well. <laughs> uh, when I watered them, I got me a glass of water. When I opened up the blinds for them to get sunshine, I was inevitably bringing myself out of darkness. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was really the most powerful um, relationship that was touched. And then I've been able to bring that uh, to other relationships, whether it's friends celebrating different, uh, uh, particularly as homecoming, not homecoming, um, what's the word I want, uh, like new homeowner uh, gifts um, and loving doing uh, my versions of uh, plant installs for friends in those ways. And yeah, it's like a love language, also... <laughs> like a plant love language. You're giving yeah. your love through plants. Yeah. And it's something that uh, I've learned people really can see the, like, they, they can value it over time. They'll look at it day in and day out, like, wow, you know, I appreciate they got me that. Or, oh, new growth, wow, it's so cool, I'm glad they got me that. So, like, they'll experience a sense of joy on a reoccurring basis, and so that- And I always think cool. about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and that's a side benefit, even if it's just, like, the reoccurring joy they get from seeing the growth, or the reoccurring compliment that they get from having the greenery in their home. Um, it's just all about being able to bring someone a little bit of what these plants have brought me. Okay, so you're spreading love through plants. <laughs> um, so is there any specific relationship 
that you want to talk about? Which one and how have plants have had an effect on that particular relationship? And it doesn't have to be your partner because I'm not trying to get in your business. Only if you, only if you want to share it. <laughs> uh, I hate to be overly selfish, so I'll just tap on it just a little bit, but I'll bring it back to someone else. Um, honestly and truly, the biggest relationship impact it has been with myself. And through my obsession with houseplants, I wanted to learn more about gardening. And then learning more about gardening, I wanted to learn more about nature. Um, what's around me that uh, can benefit me. Um, and then through that, I wanted to walk through it, be in it. So now I'm like an avid hiker. Um, and that was something that I was also disconnected a bit with the whole, uh, I call it a panini, just to try to make some light. Yeah. <laughs> stuff um, when the panini popped off, like I lost connection with my primary form of fitness, which was my primary form of motivation for fitness, which was basketball. Uh, not being able to go to the gym as I normally had, uh, yeah. lost that sense of motivation when I'm on the treadmill on the weekdays or what have you. Like, okay, I'm using this. When I get on the court, I'm a cross up zone. So like, I didn't have that anymore. So now it's like I'm finding it exciting to get back into working out because I want to beat my time in a certain hike that I did last week or I want to get stronger so I can hike a, a, a higher elevation of a hike uh, next time. Or I have aspirations to do bike, uh, bike packing, backpacking. Um, where you're hiking for multiple days and setting up camp at night and continuing on through uh, maybe cool. hundreds or thousands of miles. And the things that I tap into, it's so, there's a lot of depth to it. There's a lot of rage and peace. I walk through nature and I'm instantly thinking, gosh, if I was in times of slavery, I would have to try to, run through these like some of these trees are so close together they feel like jail cells how did how did they do that how did harriet tubman like <laughs> she was the first like dopest hiker ever yeah navigate how did she navigate those, and those trails yeah and then the next moment you have peace and you hear the birds and you're like wow this is so serene so beautiful and then the next moment i'm like how is this backcountry trail better maintained than the streets in South Central LA or downtown Atlanta or like, and then I get frustrated all over again. So it's this cycle, but it's so, again, like I'm very big on finding the truth of matters. And so it really puts me in that headspace of what, what really does matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I could go on for days of, about uh, the different tangents that nature, houseplants, has spun my head down. Um, the growth and uh, learning pathways it's provided, um, and then being able to bring that to my nieces and nephew, uh, who I love sharing everything I get to learn with, and I, I feel like I've uh, <laughs> brainwashed them into <laughs> thinking, sharing things they've learned, it's cool too, <laughs> which yeah. I think we all should have that uh, energy around. Um, Absolutely. And they that's so important for kids because a lot of, um, especially black children, they're things like nature, nature and science and all that stuff is not cool. So to have an uncle that's sharing that and it's cool and fun, of course, it's going to be a good, a, a great, um, I lost my word, a great, your role model for them. <laughs> that's great Appreciate that. yes. um, alright so your relationship that you want to speak about was yourself and that's fine because in order to build relationships with others you have to take care of yourself first you have to find yourself first you have to love yourself first so 
that's a perfect example of how plants have helped you and helped your relationships and just made everything in your life better, right? <laughs> and then uh I'll I'll throw in one more. Um okay. so uh my grandma is uh in her late 80s. Um still lives alone though. Uh but getting at an age where like memory is not as sharp. Um so over the last maybe two years now um i've had her try to maintain a house plant i shouldn't have started out her out on a calathea but i did she did i i know i know i know i know <laughs> but she did really well she did really okay, well you set her up for failure <laughs> it eventually died but she did really well i have to give her that now i have her on a bc and it's rocking steady um so i love she lives in long beach i currently live in atlanta uh okay. i probably get to see her three maybe four times a year uh so um i see her i check in on the plant how 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 you doing grandma how's it going <laughs> and she be rocking strong so Aww, that's I something that i love <laughs> to be able to uh share with her um she and she's just such a fun person and uh anything i can think of to continue to build our relationship and to continue to give her new things uh to dabble in to look forward to um i i embrace those opportunities and i love that that's that's a blessing to still have your grandmother around and plants um it seems like in our community plants and grandparents kind of go together because a lot of us learn our love for plants from our grandparents me for an example but like the, when you listen to people they'll always say oh my grandma had this pothos in their house or she had this plant and that's where you first learn plants you just didn't think about it like when you were little and your house was a jungle or your grandma's house was a jungle so that's beautiful that you're able to like kind of bring that back full circle all right so now we're going to play a would you rather game I'm going to ask you a question and you tell me would you rather do A or rather do B. Ready? Yep. All right. So would you rather have the ability to see 10 minutes into the future or 150 years into the future? Oh man. <laughs> um I'm going to go with the 150, uh, the 10 minutes. Uh, I feel like that would just get my anxiety on a whole nother level. So, yeah, let's rock with the 150. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, would you rather live in a tree house or a cave? Tree house for sure. Uh, <laughs> no windows. Oh, man. Yo, I stayed in an Airbnb, uh, the bottom of a brownstone in New York. And I didn't know I was <laughs> claustrophobic until until <laughs> then. In the so basement. We, yeah, <laughs> we definitely chilling in a treehouse. <laughs> no room. Please, I don't blame you because I used to live in a basement in Brooklyn, so I do not blame you. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> All right. Um, would you rather be in history books for something terrible or be completely forgotten after you die? Uh, completely forgotten after I die because that doesn't mean I didn't have an amazing impact. Uh, like countless, 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 countless of my most brilliant role models that I will never know their name died paving the way for us. And, you know, again, they'll, they'll be nameless but they did some amazing brilliant things for us to get to where we're at so i'll take that so be it uh but definitely not going down with a bad rap no <laughs> okay um would you rather travel the world for free for a year or have fifty thousand dollars to spend however you please uh hmm I'll take the 50K. Um, I feel like you travel for about six months and then you're like, damn, I got to start job hunting <laughs> now. <laughs> so, it's free. I, I like to travel, so I think I would choose travel. 
But I I hear you. You feel like you need to do something after six months. I would uh, use the 50K to pitch a plan to uh, um, maybe someone like REI, uh, Columbia, a um, couple other brands. Um, and I would backpack travel around the world and I would get them to sponsor that and, uh, you know, use the proceeds to raise awareness for some uh, black smart. benefiting smart. thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, would you rather go back to the past to meet your loved ones who passed away or go to the future to meet your children and grandchildren to be? Mm. This is a hard one. I know. This is. This <laughs> is. I'm okay. So I'm with the mean caveat. It would have to be like uh, the the week of me passing on. I would want to talk to the future generation, um, and just listen and hear what has come of our efforts and manifested in their life. But I like, don't want to hear that now and live with that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not saying that I'm not being pessimistic. I don't know what they would say, but I'm just. I, I'm just saying I'm not ready. <laughs> so I, I feel you. So you. So you want to know? You still want to be here to feel it? You just <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ghost Corbin wants to know what happens in 150 years. <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's fair. All right, next question. Um, would you rather be able to detect every lie you hear or get away with every lie that you tell? Well, I can do both already, so. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say get away with any lie that I tell because I have not been able to leverage that power against the white man just quite efficiently <laughs> yet, you know, particularly uh, 5 0. So <laughs> <laughs> let's rock with that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Next question <laughs> Would you rather have people know all the details of your finances or all the details of your love life? Um, <laughs> I would be, rather people know all the details of my love life because I think there's a lot to learn from it. And I'm not trying to be like boastful or braggadocious in any way, uh, but I legitimately pride myself in taking that part of my life, all parts of my life, but that part of my uh, life in particular. Um, Very cool. Yeah, very seriously. Um, <laughs> I grew up in a household uh, that did not have the best uh, teamwork at the helm. Um, so I really took that to heart and really took uh, to heart the uh, work um, and the planning and the strategizing that it creates to create a solid team um, to to rock out the better part of your life with so um i definitely take that serious and it's something that my friends know me to bring up we talk a lot about relationships and um so it it, it already is out there a good bit uh, <laughs> my partner actually <laughs> talking a little bit about that and i was like yeah so and so knows a good grip about her sex life uh, like, how does she feel I was, <laughs> i'm waiting but, like, i'm waiting to hear her, like in the corner like how does she feel about that <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? I don't want that much. We're 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 uh we 
are learning that we are seeing this from a different perspective and we'll dialogue <laughs> to make That's sure okay. we have a proper understanding <laughs> of how to respect one another's boundaries. <laughs> And that's all part of being in a relationship, learning each other and, you know, compromising where you got to compromise. Absolutely. All right. Next question. Um, would you rather go vegan for a month or eat only meat and dairy for a month? Only meat and dairy for the entire month. Uh, definitely vegan. Um, I'm a vegetarian at the moment. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely strongly against eating meat for the rest of my life um i mean if you do rock out uh but yeah it's not my thing not for you i hear you i actually tried to go vegan last year and it it worked for about half a month <laughs> and then I, and then i and then i stopped but i don't really eat like red meat and all that stuff i really just eat chicken and fish and and things like that so i think i would choose vegan too but it's very hard <laughs> very hard not gonna lie all right next question um would you rather get your paycheck given to you in pennies or never be able to use cash again never be able to use cash again and what i know what would come of this i would Think, what can I carry with me to share, offer someone that they would really be excited or happy to receive in exchange for cash? Like, hypothetically, you're down and out, you need a ride, and you're usually like, hey, I'll give you $20 if you can just take me around the corner. Like, you know, my, my cell phone's out, I just need to get to the corner store to get a charger. Um, someone put me onto this body of thought when I was early on in my entrepreneurial career, which was, if you didn't have money, what would you do? And their moral of the story was, we've utilized money and exchanged money for a much shorter period of time in the duration of human life than not. And without that, we bartered, we trade, we exchanged services or what have you there was a real communal dynamic to what was going on. So if you took money out the picture as an entrepreneur and you're like, dang, I need help building a website, uh, I, but I don't have the money, you're then thought to think, how can I offer something of value in another way to yeah. make that trade? So I would definitely go with not using cash and just think strategically like, well, maybe I can always carry like, a spare Morehouse cap to always just slide to somebody <laughs> and just like, oh, yeah. And, yeah, and it doesn't even have to be a physical thing. Like you said, you could, like, barter. If you do this, what you build my website for me, I could do this for you. We all have skills that we could trade. You don't need cash or money or any type of monetary thing to be able to be a value to other people. Exactly, exactly. Point. You hook me up with this, I'll, I'll give you a LinkedIn review, big dog. Like, yep. <laughs> and we, we do that still. Everybody still does that if you think about it today. Right, right. All right. All right um, next question. So would you rather someone see all the photos in your phone or read all of your text messages? Definitely read all of my text messages. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I predominantly use IG to communicate with uh, friends anyways um, yeah. and colleagues. It's all email. Uh, text is kind of a desert wasteland for me. Um, so, uh, yeah, but the pictures, you're also, I'm not going to get into too much hot water. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll definitely go with text. Okay. All right. That's the end of our Would You Rather? And I think that that's the end of our live and it's been so great talking to you corbin finally nice oh to God. finally meet you kind of face to face if i ever yeah. make a trip down to atlanta i'm gonna come i'm gonna call you we go plan shopping you and your her name is kim right kimmy yes yeah yes 
you and Kim, Kimmy, we gotta go plan shopping. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I wanna take a I wanna take a trip down there soon. The last time I went to Atlanta was like um I think I went in right before the pandemic and it wasn't a good experience because I chose the wrong hotel. So I was like way far away from the city. Mm -hmm. But next time I go, I'm going to call you. I'm going to text you and we're going to do something cool. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll give you a bunch of recommendations. Make yes. sure your itinerary is, uh, is on point. Um, and definitely hit up a few of the uh, Black-owned plant shops for sure. Absolutely. All right. It's been super great. I love talking to you. I hope that you have a wonderful night. Did you finish um, repotting your plant? I did, I did. So she's all nestled in. It's beautiful. I, uh, I always let my plants sit um, overnight after repotting them before I water. Um, okay, just, that's a good tip. Uh, like everyone does their thing different. A lot of people are very successful with watering right after they repot, but that's yeah. just something that I do. So take it or leave it. Absolutely. <laughs> I always say like with plant care, it's basically do whatever works for you there is no right or wrong way so i water my i water it like as soon as i repot it most of the time but it is what it is <laughs> and, and we both successful plant parents so exactly my plant well some let me not lie some of my plants are thriving <laughs> not all of them <laughs> Hey, look, there's always going to be a couple of bad apples. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, it's been great. Have a great night. Thank you so much for joining. Um, if you want to rewatch the replay, it's on my YouTube channel. Same name as my Instagram. And it'll be up in a few hours. Dope. Thank you again so, so much. Love what you're doing with the brand and just the up with the community. Black community, plant community, love it. Thank you so much for having me. We appreciate you and uh, oh, can't wait to catch I you next time. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye, everyone.